We have seen XXA example where the application is returning values or content of some files from the server in the application responses. Now there can be scenarios where the application is vulnerable to XXE injection, but it doesn't return the values of the defined external entities within its responses. In such cases, we will have to rely on blind injection techniques. The blind XXE injection is typically achieved using out of band network interactions. So in this video, let's discuss how we can prepare blind XXE injection payloads and exploit blind XXE. All right, so let's get started. Let me open my browser. And as usual, let's log in to the admin panel. And let me open a terminal. I'm navigating to desktop. And on my desktop, I have a folder called blind XXE. And this folder just contains the books.xml file. This is the original file the administrator uses to upload the student library records. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to edit this books.xml. So I'm just going to take a backup. Let's call it books-original.xml and we will work on this books.xml file. Okay, so let's open books.xml using Vim and we are just going to create the XXE payload once again. Like we did earlier, let's begin by creating an external entity. So I'm typing doc type and just give it a name. Let's probably call it document and one open square bracket and we are closing that as well. And let's also close the angular bracket that we have opened here at the doc type. Now inside this, we can create an external entity. So I'm just creating an entity called XXE and I'll use the system keyword. And earlier we have used the file scheme to read the etsy password file. Now the assumption is that the application doesn't show the contents in the HTTP response. So even if you are able to read the file, the content will not be displayed for you. And that's where we have to rely on blind injection techniques. First, let's try to check if this application is vulnerable or not. So I'm just giving the IP address of my attacking machine, which is Kali Linux in this case, 1.93 colon 4444. As a last step, let's also trigger this entity. So I'm just replacing this John with ampersand XXE semicolon. Now let's save this file. And let's also open a new tab and let's start our Python web server here on port 4444. So Python 3 dash M HTTP dot server and the port number. Let's hit enter. Now let's open the browser and let's upload this books.xml file and let's click upload and the file is successfully uploaded. Now let's click on this verify results. When we click this verify results button, if the application is vulnerable to XXE, it is going to make a HTTP request to the web server that we have started. So let's click verify results button. Seems like there is an error here, but let's go back to the terminal and see the server logs. Look at that. There is a HTTP request from the vulnerable server, which is 192.168.1.105. There is a GET request from the server. Now, this can also be treated as SSRF through XXE. 
SSRF or server side request forgery attack is something that allows an attacker to make HTTP requests to internal servers. Even in this case, we can make HTTP requests to any server or application that is reachable from the server where our vulnerable application is running. So the takeaway here is XXE can be used to perform SSRF attacks. But in our case, the objective is to be able to read the files from the server using blind XXE injection. So let's see how we can do that in the next video.